Lord, today we're grateful that you saw fit to, to do the unthinkable in our terms, to do the impossible as you died taking all of the sins of the world for all time upon yourself as a gift, a gift of love and grace for all of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you today for that and for the mystery and the wonder of the resurrection, Lord, that death could not hold you as it cannot hold us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for these, these songs that men have given us to sing back to you, Lord God, that you have inspired for this group of people today who have come to honor you and to, to bless our conferments. We love you, Lord. And once again, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, and glory. the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> All was lost. The segue to grace would be a painful one. Folks had to lose everything that mattered most in this life to gain the unthinkable to gain freedom from the slavery of sin. All was lost. If we bring that home. That which is most precious to you, perfect in every way, has been trampled and disregarded, murdered by the evil of the world. And you couldn't stop it. Mary Mary Magdalene just wants to be near Jesus, to hold his hand one last time, and just to be near him. Who would you give anything to have alive and well right here and now with us today? Welcome to the tomb where they laid my Lord and my friend. John tells us, in chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark. And she saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and said to the other disciple, that's always John, whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple, John, and they were going to the tomb, so they both ran together and the other disciple, John, outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in and also saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went away to, again to their own homes, but Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head, and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, 
Tell me where you have taken him and laid him, and I will take him. And Jesus said to her, Mary, has Jesus said your name? Just say it to yourself, Mary. And she turned and she said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet attended, ascended to my father. But I go to my brethren, go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and to your father and to my God and to your God. That is the holy word of God. What is the Easter of your life, if not the moment that the impossible has manifested to you? Fears have been abated, doubts quelled, hope eternal has risen in your heart. Life, your life, makes sense. That's why I'm here. That's who I am. I'm living in chapter one of the, my eternal story with a happy end. No with no ending at all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We better sing something. He lives. We better stand up and sing this one too. There's a chorus that's not printed in this. Let's sing it all together. Colossians 3, 1 through 4. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. <clears throat> soon say in 1 Peter 3 9 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by his great mercy he has given us a birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled and unfading kept in heaven for you you and are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time in you, in this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to, had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, If ever I love 
John continues in chapter 20. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. And then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. If we announce or pronounce or announce, not pronounce sin and salvation. We read from the text what sin is and what salvation is. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands and print the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Do you blame him? I don't. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them and Jesus came, the doors being shut, walked through the wall and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. And then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Now I don't hear a harsh tone in that. What I hear is Jesus affirming to someone who was so hurt and wasn't about to go through that a second time and have any false hope. Doubting Thomas, they call him, Doubting Thomas's comment was, Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord, my God. Thomas, the first disciple to call Jesus God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, you, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Moses said, I call heaven and earth as a witness today to you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Blessings over curses, life over death, never more true than today. Pray with me, please. Lord, for all of your beloved today, for us assembled here, we thank you for a choice that you gave us, Lord God, as you absorbed the sin of the world, our sin, my sins, past and present, future, my sins. You absorbed them, Lord God, so that we would have a choice to make, a choice to follow you in our hearts, invite you in to, to steer our life as we choose still, to invite you and the Father to come and live in our hearts as you promised, Lord. If you love my Father, you will keep his words and we will come and make our home with you, you said. And so I thank you today, Lord God, that you have made your home with us. And I thank you, Lord, that every day you give us that option. Every day, choose me. Choose me and live free. And today is no different, Lord God. We celebrate that death could not hold you and that it cannot hold us, Lord God, because we have made a confession, a confession of faith. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that he died for my sins, was risen on the third day, and resides now with the Father at the throne, there to receive me 
for eternity. And believing this, Jesus, our Father, you have given us that eternal life that's beyond anything that we can ever imagine or experience here. And we thank you for that, Lord. Bless this day and this time together and, and these confirmants as they come forward and, and make their pledge to love and follow you for life. And we pray these things in your precious name, wonderful Jesus. Amen. Please come. God bless you. Rest of you. Please have a seat. Only God can make us more than what more than we are, and he often uses critical faith moments in our life to accomplish the job. Looking back, can you name one special moment that has defined your life? Perhaps it was the day you gave your life to Jesus. Perhaps it was when you trusted God at a critical time. Moses experienced his defining moment at the burning bush. David experienced his defining moment when Samuel anointed him king of Israel. Esther's defying moment came when she risked her life to save the Jewish people. Peter's defying moment was when Jesus called him to become a fisher of men. And Paul always referred to the Damascus Road appeared of Acts 9 as his defying moment. Perhaps you're facing a defying moment in your life right now. You are either in a crisis or crossroad. You can either trust God and press on by faith, or you can lead on your own understanding and go your own way. God's word gives this trusted counsel. Put your trust in the Lord your God, and you will endure. Take the road less traveled. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Thank you, Judy. Give her a hand. Deegan is one of the first to ask if she could read some night, some days. What's your favorite thing about going to the fair? What's the funnest thing? Huh? The food. What's the funniest thing? Huh? People screaming on the rides. People screaming on the rides. I'd say that's pretty cool. Yeah. My favorite, my funny, the funniest thing for I see is going to the fun house. I mean, is they, do they still have the fun house or is it too warm? We still have a fun house, okay. In the fun house, you want, you pay your money and you go in and, and the whole world around you is distorted. Everything in the mirror you look in and every mirror that you see, you're either tall and skinny or you're short and squat and, and the, the floor isn't where it's supposed to be and all of that. It's all a distortion. The good news is you get to walk back out of there and look at the big portly guy eating a foot-long hot dog and standing in line for a health drink. Fun house. The world is like a fun house. The world is like a fun house. It's a distortion that feeds back to you who you ought to be, what you're not. You seen those mirrors, townhouse mirrors? And that's what the Lord, that's what the world does to you. It's done it for years, and it does it still. The world, when I say the world, the world without God. The world of advertisements, the world of movies about the way life ought to be, all those things. The world is the fun house that you don't want to live in. Because of Jesus, we don't have to live in the fun house. Because of Jesus, because when he created man and woman, what did he say? It is very good. It is very good. It's good enough. It doesn't need the world Take that with you every moment of your day, every time of disappointment or another person, anything in your life tries to define you. Come back.
back to the fact that God has already said who you are and what you are. You're precious in his sight. Redeemed as you make these promises to me. And that's unchanging, regardless of what you do. It's unchanging when you've given your heart to this Jesus Christ. Your identity is solid and it can't be improved. The world will tell you otherwise. It does today, and it will in the future. Don't buy it. Just think about the fun house. That fat guy with a foot long hot dog. Standing in line for it. Today, what we do is we guide you to a pledge. That pledge is not unlike other pledges that, that folks take. They pledge to we protect our country, and some here have done that, and still do that. And uh, they keep that pledge, because they made a pledge. And confirmation is just such a pledge. You pledge your allegiance to Jesus Christ. Confirmation marks the completion of the congregants' program of confirmation ministry, a period of instruction in the Christian faith, as confessed in the teachings of the Lutheran Church. Those who have completed this program were made members of the church in baptism. Confirmation includes a public profession of the faith into which the candidates were baptized, thus underscoring God's action in their baptism. These persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptisms. Please stand. Each of you say your names. Brody Stockert. Deacon Kirschman. Thanks, Kirschman. Bailey Stockert. Dear friends, we rejoice that you now desire to make public profession of your faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word God's loving purpose for you and all creation. You have been nourished in his holy, at his holy table, called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church the faith in which we baptize. All of you answer, please. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all of his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge in the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the ev life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for those who are affirming their baptism <clears throat> for all the baptized everywhere, that they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that they may be kept in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That they may be sent into the world and witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That they may be brought to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
You have made public confession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in his holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the examples of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Each person answer in turn. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made these men and women your own love. You forgive them all their sins, Lord, and brought them to the newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. 